What is going on, YouTube Fitness family? We got a full leg day for you. We gotta grow these puppies into next year. I got like three more months left in my off season. So impetus for me is bigger legs, bigger lats. So today we're gonna be doing legs. I'm gonna walk you through the leg workout itself, but also the thought process between how many sets I'm doing, how many reps I'm doing. Also, I wanna talk a little bit today about like, obviously people always wonder like, should I be doing heavy weights, lighter weights for a lot of reps? I think there's a lot to be put in that conversation. So we're gonna talk a lot about that today, about how to structure your workout to maximize growth. So there'll be so much value in this video, I don't even know what to tell you guys, but stuff we're gonna do, let's get into it. First exercise we are going to hop into is a Smith Machine squat. So why Smith Machine versus free bar? For me, there's a couple reasons. The first and foremost, it's gonna really allow me to drive a lot more time under tension. So slow down my reps a lot more comfortably than if I was using free bars, because like you have to worry about balance. I like to do pauses on the bottom of my rep. And so that really helps me to have this fixed plane, obviously 2D instead of be able to move in all the different directions. That was loud. The other reason is because it allows me to focus on different, uh, have different impetus. So if my feet are farther forward, I'm getting a lot more glutes and hamstrings. If my feet are farther back, closer to myself, so I'm getting more knees over toes, more quad flexion or knee flexion for quad stretch. I'm gonna get more quads. So I love the Smith of allows the diversity. You can even go wide stance and kind of really push back against the bar to get even more glute focus. So you can be here and get even more of that glute focus. So for me, I just think Smith machine for hypertrophy purposes is just a little bit more robust than free bar. And that's just a personal preference. If you love free bar squatting and you're trying to get your max up, by all means, do your free bar squats. Plus, obviously ergonomically, it's really good to like get free bar squats down before you go to Smith machine because a lot of times Smith machine allows you to be a little bit more sloppy with your reps if you don't really have that hip mobility and that glute activation that you need to have proper squat form. So what I'm gonna do here is a little bit of a, a warm up set. I just have a plate on there. I'm just gonna do a few reps with really good tempo. So the way I set my feet on these is slightly in front of the bar at about shoulder width and then toes pointed slightly out. So what I do is down and back, let the knees track out and then I'm gonna sit into it and I'm just gonna let it stretch a little bit here bottom of my rep so that's my first set so I'm not really trying to like drive hypertrophy here what I'm trying to do is just get really good activation through the quads get my glutes firing so you can see how much stretch I'm getting at the bottom of my rep really good posture try to keep that chest nice and up upright so I don't I don't round my back I'm not getting a ball it's called a butt wing which is when your lower back starts to kind of round at the bottom of your rep so some of the cues I like to use is keep my chin up, keep my chest proud, and pushing my elbows forward. A lot of people will have their elbows back here, which obviously a lot forces your kind of ch your shoulders forward. Whereas you go here, stay nice and upright. It's gonna allow you to keep the impetus where you wanna feel it. Probably gonna go one warm up set after this, and then we're gonna go into our working set. So with these, I'll probably shoot for that eight to 12 rep range with really good negative and about a one second pause at the bottom before driving out. So if I do one more warm up set with two plates, we'll go into our first working set. First working set, we go for 12 reps. A lot of people ask, why don't you use a belt? When I use a belt, it almost feels like I get like extra abdominal pressure, I guess. I mean, that's the point of it. That's what belt is for. So you can press your abs. You got something when I do it, especially with like super slow tempo, all I feel is like it's digging into my freaking ribs my like upper abdominal my obliques it just doesn't feel good honestly so like at this point i don't feel like i go really heavy enough to legitimize the need for it i'm not trying to go for a one rep max so i don't really feel like i need that internal bracing as if i were to be like a power lifter so not to say you don't can't use it it's just for me i also see people using it on like the fucking leg press which i think is just moronic just because you don't you're not having to brace to your core Everything should be pretty much from the waist down. So you shouldn't really need anything to brace your core on a leg press. So it's not gonna make your waist smaller, guys. So don't think, oh, if I wear my belt when I train everything. Sure, over time, there could be a little bit of atrophy in the abs, which might, you know, bleach makes your waist slightly smaller. But at the end of the day, most of what's gonna determine your waist structure is gonna be genetics and also how much you train your obliques and core. So if you guys are doing like side, core and twists and stuff like don't do that because it's going to build out the muscle there and make your waist look more blocky so this isn't going to make my waist more blocky by not wearing a belt on squats i don't think there's any science to that but if you guys are more comfortable in a belt obviously by all means so when we go here 
12 reps, really good negative, nice pause at the bottom. Driving out of the hole, you should get a lot of quad hypertrophy from this, just from all that knee flexion, the bottom of my rep. So, so I can do here. Feels so C2, a lot of people ask me why I do that. A little bit of like a double contraction, so to speak, the bottom of my rep. What I'm doing is finding that really good stretch position, and then I'm kind of digging into it a second time. And for me, it's just an intensity technique to try to get the most out of that stretch position where they've shown under load, you're gonna be able to drive a ton of hypertrophy from that stretch position. So I double hit it before I come out. But I think it's a little bit more of an advanced technique. So how are you guys starting out? Just do the pause, then drive out. All right, second exercise, we're gonna do a deficit Bulgarian, which I know is everybody's fucking favorite exercise. So we're gonna make it even harder by adding a box here, about four inches off the ground for my front foot. The reason I'm elevating my front foot is because that's gonna allow me to go deeper in my rep. It's gonna allow me to have more knee bend, which is actually gonna cause more stretch through the quad. It's gonna induce more motor crew and more hypertrophy. So that's why I have the box here. The other thing that's really great about this exercise that allows me to open up my hip flexors which tend to be really tight. So especially my first and second set of these, I just really focus on getting really deep and providing that basically stretch under load is going to help me stay healthier for the long term. It's because I noticed that tight hips, tight lower back, obviously no bueno for the long term, especially if you're sitting a lot for your job. Definitely want to utilize a lot of good range of motion on your leg days. Keep everything nice and long and healthy. So what I'm going to do here, I set my boxes up. Front foot is going to be forward. I'm using this kind of sissy, sissy squat apparatus for my back foot because I like to rest my ankle right on that pad. So I'm using a very minimal amount of drive from that back foot. I would highly recommend if you have something like this, use it. Or if you only have a bench, just use a bench. But I would go flat foot on the bench as opposed to a lot of people try to stick their toe into it. It's just not gonna be, you should only use your back leg. Technically it's almost like a guiding leg just for balance. And you really should be focusing on the heel drive and quad drive in that front leg and also glute in that front leg. So that's how it's gonna look. I just have a plate on here to start, so nothing crazy. Really good stretch here. Nice posture, and then dig out. Really nice open chest. See how much stretch I get through the quad in that front leg. I get a really good stretch to that back. Hip flexor, adductor, groin area. And really, like I said, I'm just kind of using that back leg as a guiding leg. I'm not really pushing that much force. I'm trying to use mostly the heel, pressing through the heel on that front foot, getting a lot of quad and glute drive in that front leg. And I'm gonna rack it between legs. The reason for that is because I don't wanna take away from my second leg by going right into it. Because obviously, I'm a little aerobically taxed. My right leg's gonna be taxed, so I don't wanna take away from my set on my left leg. The other thing to note here, by increasing the range of motion, even at two, three, four inches, it's going to allow me to use so much less weight to drive just as much hypertrophy. And I think that's so beneficial because less taxing on the joints, it's going to provide more longevity. And they've proven more and more so that people will say, oh, I do half squats because my knees hurt. Well, really you should be decreasing the weight and utilizing full range of motion unless you have some sort of knee replacement or something like that that's gonna prohibit you from going to full range. But otherwise, if you don't have any medical reason, you should be hitting full range with lighter weight. And that's actually been proven to keep your knees healthier over time. So don't use that as an excuse unless there's a medical necessity. And so the third thing I will say about these, if you wanna grow your cake, grow your ass, that extra range of motion is going to give so much more stretch to the glutes and put them in a mechanically disadvantaged position so they really have to work super hard to get out of that bottom position. And I guess one more thing, because I have so much knowledge for you, this is gonna help you on your squats too. If you get really deep, your Bulgarians, you're strengthening your glutes, your adductors, your quads in that, stre in that stretch position, which is where most people fail on a squat, right? In the bottom, not at the top. So if you can strengthen yourself in the bottom echelon of those reps, you're inevitably gonna strengthen yourself on your other compound movements. So, 
yeah, it's just a tremendous moving pattern. It's not the most fun, it sucks. But at the end of the day, a lot of times you do the stuff that's hardest to make the most progress. The leg press. Honestly, it's an extremely high impact, low risk exercise. You can utilize a lot of range of motion. You can work basically your whole leg, glutes, adductors, quads, hamstrings. It's a really, really great way to work the entire leg. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do your leg presses because it's not just a down and up. What we're gonna do is we're always going to clear the body with our knees. So what that's gonna, well, how we're gonna do that is point the toes out very slightly with about a shoulder width. Same way we kind of show, set up on our squats, we're doing the leg press. So what we're gonna do is lift off. We're gonna make sure we're holding, for you guys, I would say to start, make sure you're holding your butt down. Because as you get really deep, your butt's gonna naturally wanna roll off if your hips aren't loose. So I would say just start with a very light weight, let's say a plate, maybe two plates, max, just to get really comfortable with this depth. So a lot of times people are really used to doing their reps shortened. What we're gonna do is actually track out, allow us to clear the upper body, get a really good stretch, really good knee flexion, which is gonna allow for a lot of stretch to the quads. They see my butt's still planted. So a lot of people are like, oh, if you go that deep, it's gonna fuck up your lower back. Like, no, if your back is still flat on the bench and you're letting the knees clear your upper body, it's like doing a deep squat. It's so funny, the keyboard warriors, they'll be like, oh, you're not going deep enough on your squats, but then you're going too deep on your fucking leg press. Like, pick your battle, like, what do you want it to be? Like, make sure you go to depth, whatever exercise you're doing. So, as you can see, knees track out. Even if I don't have, my mobility is good enough now, even if I don't hold myself down, watch, this, you'll see. And you can fucking call me out on my bullshit if you want. I'm gonna go this deep. Is my butt coming off the pad? You tell me. I feel no pressure in my lower back. I feel all impetus through my quads, through my glutes, through my adductors, and a really good stretch. I could sit here, it says 10 plates on here. I could sit here probably comfortably for a good five minutes. And that's because I've worked so hard on working out this range of motion over time under load. This isn't just stretching, guys. This is really utilizing the leg press to get those reps in at depth and provide that load in a stretch position to continue to open up that tissue over time. That wasn't earned in a week. That wasn't earned in two weeks. That was earned in like five years. So not to say it's gonna take you that long, but it was a lot of trial and error for me. It took a lot of time. But now I would say if you'd worked on this really every single leg day, worked on improving your range of motion, I'd say within two to three months, you'll feel like your, your depth on everything is improving. You'll feel a lot looser on your reps. So this is how my leg preps reps look. If it's five plates, eight plates, 10 plates, it's like this right here. Really controlled eccentric, knees clear the upper body, big stretch, flat back, knees track out, and then drive. So I always set that for anywhere between eight and 15 reps with that tempo. And I, I'm telling you right now that it's probably responsible for about 50% of my leg growth over the last three to four years because of the fact that I can go heavier really safely, not put my lower back in a precarious position, not axial load, meaning pressure on my spine. So I prefer it even to, let's say, a squat because of the fact, for hypertrophy, solely because of the fact that I have no axial loading, I have no, much less risk on the joints, much less risk of a hernia, all of these things are compounding. So the last cue I'll give you guys is make sure that that back plate is in an upright position. So I have the back plate in the highest position and that allows me to keep a lot of impetus in the adductors and the glutes at the bottom of my rep, because if I'm back here, it's going to probably bottom out the machine before I get to that really good depth. So by having the back up, it's basically putting me more into that like pretzel shape, the bottom people. I've literally had people come over and ask me if I'm okay. Like I th they think I like stalled out at the bottom of my rep because sometimes I have like eight plates on there, I'm doing like a five second pause. The bottom people run over like, dude, are you stuck? I'm like now nah, I'm good, I'm just being an asshole. So, so next exercise. We're gonna lunge the squat to lunge. I think walking lunges, especially if you can keep tension on the quads and glutes, they're a really good exercise. So what I'm actually gonna do is, instead of just a traditional walking lunge, I'm gonna do a lunge to squat to lunge where I never come all the way out of the hole. So I'm not standing all the way up at pretty much any point. I'm gonna lunge 
I'm gonna always kind of keep my legs just wider in shoulder width. I'm gonna lunge out. I'm gonna put that in my back, but I'm gonna lunge out. Nice, proud chest. And then I'm gonna go right into a squat. But you see how I didn't stand all the way up? I'm not here. I'm gonna keep it here, right into a squat. And then I'm gonna go into a left lunge. Right into a squat, right into a right, right lunge. So the reason I like to do it like that is three reasons. One is constant tension. So you see, by never standing up, my glutes, my quads, everything's always engaged throughout the entire set. The second reason is because it allows me a really good range of motion, knee all the way to the floor um, on these walk lunges. And also aerobically, it's gonna help keep me in really good shape just because if I'm always doing just leg press or like, you know, lap pull downs, this is the type of exercise that's gonna keep me a little bit more dynamic, keep my heart health really good. Probably my heart rate's probably gonna be close to 150, 160 at the end of the set. Not to say that's like my primary goal, but at the end of the day, we can't always just be 100% worried about getting huge. Like getting huge has consequences. So if you're not keeping your heart health and aerobic capacity where it needs to be, it's gonna be to your detriment. So, you know, like the joke is a bodybuilder can't like walk down the street without breathing heavily. That's why people are like, oh, Eric's in really good shape, even though he's really big. And that's because I lens, they lends itself to this type of exercise. Also using a lot of time under tension which is gonna be more aerobically taxing, so. All right, last exercise here, your quad extensions on the clock. So what I'm gonna do is go for time instead of reps. So the rules are, I'm gonna go for a minute of reps without putting the weight completely down. I can hold at the top, I can do a slow negative, but I can't put the weight down. I'm gonna do a minute of rest. So this is just another way to add intensity and diversity to your training. So like a lot of times when people shoot for reps, you can do 10 reps in literally 12 seconds if you do them fast enough. Or you could do 10 reps in a minute. So not all reps are created equal as we know. So if you add more time and attention, you're gonna induce more stimulus, more hypertrophy. So I really like to do this because for me, that's not like a dick, but I can stack out this quad extension and probably do like 30 reps without with pretty strict form. So I need to give myself different ways of adding that, that uh, kind of intensity I need to continue to grow. So I just do come over here and I do performative reps for three sets, like I might as well not do anything at all. Like you need to drive stimulus. Burn is not gonna do it. Like you need to have the burn under a load that's heavy enough to drive the hypertrophy. And this is one thing I wanted to have you guys take away is that burn isn't everything. I'll see guys doing like single arm tricep extension with like 10 pounds on a cable. I'm like, sure, you might feel a little burn in your tricep, but there's really no, there's not enough load to create the stimuli or else I would just do a wall sit every time I want to do legs for like 10 minutes, my quads would be on fire, but I'm not gonna have legs like C-bum if I go do a wall sit for 10 minutes, just because it burns really, really bad. Same thing, if I do a hike, my calves usually will burn really bad, but I don't think it's gonna make my calves a lot bigger. Whereas if I did three minutes of really like intense, heavy calf raises, I'm gonna get more hypertrophy because the load is greater. So what I would tell you is use the burn as a tool. And what I mean by that is, if you feel the burn in the correct areas, but you also are hitting that mechanical failure, then you're doing it right because you're feeling burn, but you're also providing enough stimulus to push yourself towards those like almost ultimate failure points with good form. So that's why I'd say, don't always shoot for just burn because just burn's not gonna do it, but burn with failure, that's the gold standard. Like, you know you're doing it right. So if I'm not doing a lap pull down, it feels like my lats are gonna jump out of the skin because they burn so bad, and I'm at mechanical failure, I know for a fact my back is growing. Whereas if I just did a really light and did squeezes and I felt my back burning, but I could do like 100,000 reps, I'm not really gonna be getting much growth out of that exercise. So same principle applies here. I gotta make sure I have enough load to drive hypertrophy. So I'm gonna look at the clock. It's 30 seconds, let's hit it. Ah, so nice long hold, pulling my butt down through the seat, slow on the eccentric, pointing the toes through the opposite wall, really good stretch underneath, Push, squeeze. So good posture here. Getting a really good negative. See how my legs are shaking because it's super late in the workout now. I'm pretty devout of glycogen. So I'm gonna get that inevitable shake towards the end here. It doesn't feel super heavy. I just don't think my muscles have the control to not shake at this point. I'll have to look up what scientific phenomenon causes that. But as you can see, super slow milking that eccentric, really 
getting the biggest stretch I can, driving out big squeeze, pull, using these handles to pull my butt down so I'm not lifting off so I can get as much stretch as possible underneath. Oof. All right, so that's a minute. I'll probably push for a little bit more because I have some more in me. Ah. 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 Oh, fuck. All right, so I'm resting. So the remaining part of the minute, or I went over a minute, but it's gonna be my rest period. So I'm controlling my work period and I'm also controlling my rest. By controlling my rest, I'm not letting myself get to that full 90 seconds, two minutes, two and a half minutes, where I'm almost fully recovered. I'm kind of playing in that middle ground. And that's another way you can increase intensity by reducing rest time. It's not good if you're doing like a super heavy squat or something, you're trying to increase a one rep max or something. Something like this, you're doing quad extensions. By all means, reduce your rest time. Stop dicking around your phone for three minutes between sets because by limiting that amount of recovery, inevitably, if I go 60% recovery in that next set, I'm gonna be like twice as burning, twice as bad halfway through the set. So I'm right about there, about a minute in, let's hit it. And I get to tell this set's gonna suck way worse than the last one because I'm limiting my recovery time. So first set, not easy by any means, but also not as hard as it could have been. Also, I'm not, I don't know if I'm tripping balls, but I feel like I just felt the earthquake or it's just this thing rocking. But I swear to God, I felt an earthquake. Which would be crazy if I did. But I'm still going. I don't give a fuck. Ugh. Ugh, fuck. Fuck, that burn is crazy. Ugh. Ah, come on, 20 seconds. All right, so finishing out with the most exciting part of the workout, got some calves. Honestly, I love the seated calf because it allows a really good stretch. The bottom of my rep, really good peak contraction at the top. I usually will take these pretty much to failure. The biggest thing with calves, I think, is to like go heavy enough that you can really get a good burn. You can get, like obviously you can still control the weight, but it's enough that it's not just performative. Because I'll see I've got a lot of guys at the end of their workout, just treat calves and like, an extra thing just to do because they have to do it but you gotta kind of train your calves like you would anything else so you have to really push load and try to get that hypertrophy good range of motion the other thing i would say with calves since they're such a small muscle group and they're not going to be very aerobically or cns taxing i'd really limit your rest times i think that's really helped me a lot with growing is and, and also time saving too right if i can do five sets in 10 minutes, I'm limiting my rest times like 30 or 45 seconds. That's a big deal. Whereas if I take two minute rests, first of all, I have to go a lot heavier. And second of all, it might take me 15 to 17 minutes. And I really don't want to like take that long on calves, especially with limited time. So I really like to make sure I'm only spending about 10 minutes. The other thing you'll see me do, oh, two things. One, oh, you saw me do it. I kind of speed up my reps towards the end of the set. When I'm close to failure with those really strict reps with good time and retention, I'll speed it up for four, six, eight reps to just get that secondary failure point. So even if I'm failure with that really good tempo, I'll bang out four, five, six, seven reps with slightly faster tempo because I still can do those faster reps. Um, the second thing you'll notice, I kind of switch my heel position throughout the set. So sometimes I'll go kind of heel in, more heel out. Uh, you can do this between your sets. You can go heel in one set, heel out the other one. Hit different parts of the calves straight on for some other sets. But you can see I took maybe 30 seconds there and I'm right back into it. I just don't want to take so much rest that obviously I'm going to have to go up and wait or I'm just going to do so many reps that it just takes a lot of time. So I'll probably get close to failure with this weight at let's say 8 to 10 with the negatives and I'll bang out like an extra 
five, six, seven reps at the end of the set. I just hate how much they burn. But hope you guys love this workout. We got three more sets here. I won't make you watch me do five sets of fucking calves. So hope you guys are enjoying this series of full workouts, kind of raw, a little bit more. Just trying to get as much value out there, but also kind of see how I actually train because top exercise videos, sure, you get to see some of my favorite exercises, but you don't really get to see like the training intensity as much or the intentionality of the sets, the reps, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do. It means a lot to me. Turn on your post notifications so you can get sick, crazy workouts just like me. Also, make sure you support Alpha Elite. Use my code ERIC. These shorts are amazing for leg day, so don't sleep on them. They have amazing tops, oversized tees. So go check them out there. But without further ado, I'll catch you guys on the next one.